Welcome guys, Sense here. Today we will start off my mouse modding 101 series with a video about how to make a paracord. This video is the first part of a series where I will talk about the basics of mouse modding. It will range from making paracords over installing them to painting your mouse and changing the switches. If you are interested in the following episodes, consider subscribing to not miss out on any future episodes. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start with the actual video. I can recommend using type 3 paracord and there are way more variants available than you're used to from regular paracord sellers. Obviously we need some solder, I prefer 60x40 or 60x38, doesn't matter too much. Then we need a soldering iron and also there the quality doesn't matter too much, you don't need some high end stuff. A entry level one should do the job quite fine. In addition we need some pliers and a lighter. I can also recommend this really handy tool, it makes soldering way way easier. I don't know the exact name of it, but it will be linked in the description. Obviously we need some cables and some crimps. I will include the exact specifications in the description, that way I don't need to read out all the details, because I find that quite boring in the video. Because we want to actually use our mouse later on, we need a USB-A male connector. We start off by cutting the cord to our desired length. After we did that, we need to get the small ropes inside of the paracord out of the paracord so we can fit our cables in there. You can achieve that by just pulling it out of it. At this point, you could also attach the cables to one of the strings inside the cord and pull them through. From personal experience, I can't really recommend that because most of the times it gets stuck in the middle and you need to do it the normal way anyways. Now you need to cut four cables to the fitting length. Normally I make them 10 to 20 centimeters longer than the paracord. This way you have some cable left if you happen to make a mistake when attaching the connector or when soldering. Now you put all four cables in the tightest possible heat shrink and shrink it. Now you can start with getting the cables through the power cord. This is a really annoying thing to do and it can take quite some time, especially if you're doing it the first time. When you can finally see and feel the cables at the end of the power cord, you're nearly done with the most annoying thing about making a power cord. Make sure that you burn the end of the cord, so that no threads come loose. Now you can cut the cables to the desired length. Keep in mind that when you straighten the paracord later, the cables can get sucked into the paracord. Now you take the tightest fitting heat shrink and put it on the connection between the cord and the cables. That way you have a kind of a stress release so the cables don't slide around. Also add the heat shrink of a bigger size to the paracord, we're gonna use that later when we're heat shrinking around the USB connector. Make sure that the cables have the perfect length to fit right into the soldering pins of the USB connector. We start off by tinning all four wires and then attaching them to the USB connector. This isn't a soldering guide, therefore I'm not going in depth with the soldering part. Keep in mind that you shouldn't use too much heat and also try to not inhale any of the molten solder. Always use protective eyewear and in the best case you utilize a fume extractor. I will link further resources in the description. we connected the cables to the USB connector, we can proceed to put the actual connector into the connector case. This process is pretty straightforward, but if you somehow have problems with it, you can slow down the video and watch it on 0.5 or 0.25. After we've closed the housing, we tighten the pins with the pliers. Then we search for a heat shrink that barely fits over the housing and we shrink it. Now our prepared heat shrink comes into play. Put it as tight as possible over the big heat shrink and shrink it too. We use this as an additional stress relief. Also it looks way better if the heat shrink is tightly connected to the paracord. Now you really need to take your time to tighten the paracord itself. This part is crucial for the flexibility of the end product. Try to only straighten the cord without pressing too firmly since this could affect the wires inside of the cord. 
Repeat this process as long as you need to. When you're done with the straightening part, you can close the heat shrink on the other side of the cord. Also, I like to add an even smaller heat shrink over the previous heat shrink because I really like the idea of stress relieving the cables as much as possible. Now we come to the crimping part or to the soldering part as I like to do it. Normally, you would use an expensive crimping tool to crimp the cables. I actually just solder the wires into the crimps. This works also perfectly and that way I don't need to spend a lot of money on the crimping tool. And yes, they go for 50 to 200 bucks. It might be the case that you actually need to press the little pins on the crimps down, but if you've done that, they fit perfectly into the connector. And there you have it, the finished paracord. This is what I call an universal paracord. It's universal because you could either add multiple heat shrinks, a plastic shrink or a stock stress relief and install it into your favorite mouse. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the next episode. We are going to install the paracord into a mouse. I will show you how to make a stress relief, how to find out the wiring for your favorite mouse model and how to install it in the given mouse. If you enjoyed the first episode of my Mouse Modding 101, consider liking the video. And if you have any questions or want to share your opinion on the video or how I can improve the series, feel free to drop a comment. Thank you for watching and have a great day.